we covered the instantiation of the framework and created a basic module that displayed the hello world. In this video we're going to dive deeper and we're going to look at the differences between modules and widgets in ES Framework and the basic structure for creating a module. We will also look at some best practices for modular development. In this video we're going to build a basic tabular application with some very simple content. In later videos we will build the content which you see here in this completed application. So let's first take a look at what comprises an application. In an application it is the initial page that the user will enter into and that includes in this case the header and then the section where ES Framework was initialized. Within there we create what are called modules and a module is a subject area that is all related and is displayed in one area of the screen. That module then is comprised of widgets. In this case I have a toolbar widget, I have several buttons and then I have a grid. All of this makes up a single module and it is going to be stored in an employee list module. We then have a employee by period module which allows us to have drop downs to select the content of the grid. This is a separate module. Each of these are also widgets. With the dashboard it's a similar operation. We have a couple of drop downs that control another widget this comprises of another module. You can split up the modules however you like but it is recommended that you build them all with a single context. You can make them as large or as small as you want but again the more modular you make them, the more smaller you make them, the more you can reuse them in other applications. So if for example this employee dashboard was going to be used in several applications that shows the employees by the different uh, cost centers, you could just create this once and reuse it over and over again. ES Framework was designed with this in mind. So let's now take a look at where we left off with our tutorial in the last video. We had a Hello World application and it just simply had the header and then a simplistic module that had nothing but Hello World in it. So let's take a look at the source now and you'll see that in the app main, which is where that module gets loaded from, we have the hello world tag. Now what we want to do is to build a tabular style application with those four tabs that we saw in the completed app. And we do this by creating a module with a definition. And we start the module definition with var uh, first of all we need to create a script tag within this. So this is going to be done within a script and then we do so with a var tag. So we add var and then a variable which will hold the definition of the module. We're just going to use this variable called module. You can use whatever you like. And that is a JavaScript object. Now modules really only require several properties and several functions depending on the needs of that module and generally those are fields which will define the local variables of that module and the initialize function and that is just a standard function no parameters at this time that this function will be executed when the module is instantiated so let's go ahead and do that. Now the second half of this would be to instantiate the module we just defined and then we do that through an es.module and that function takes two parameters. It takes the ID of the div where the module will operate over which in this case is um, this module here so we will do and module and the second parameter is the name of the variable that we use to define the module itself. And so we use the word module here. 
So that is all that is required to instantiate a module and the main properties and functions that are required. There are others which can be added later, but for now this is all we will need. Okay, so we have created the basic module and now if we look at our application what we want to do is to build these tabs here and for now again we're going to just use some basic content so we do this by creating a tab strip widget let's go ahead and do that in our code now so we're going to replace the um, header that we've created here with a div tag now a div tag is normally what is used to create widgets so we're going to do that here. We're going to call this one main tab strip. Now with all of the widgets that we create using ES Framework, we also have some advanced capabilities for managing the size of those widgets. And we can do so where it automatically understands when the user resizes the window to retain that sizing. And one of those operations is through the use of height with a value of fill. And what this will do then is make sure that our tab strip is always the size of the window or actually the parent container that we place this in. In this case, it's going to be the entire module. So we add this parameter, height equals fill, and that will make sure that, that is always that size, even through resizing. Now with this div, this creates the widget itself. And then what we're going to do is fill in some of the content. So what we need are the four tabs. And then we will need the content for those four tabs. And we do this through an unordered list tag here. And let's finish that there. OK. And then there are going to be four list items one for each of the tabs that we're going to create. So there's going to be employee list and then there is going to be the employee by period okay and then we have another one which is the dashboard and then the final one which is the reporting tab. Now as I mentioned before these are going to be the tabs themselves and then there's a series of divs that need to follow it which are the content for each of those tabs. So we do this by setting up a div and then specifying content equals and then this is the URL for the module that's going to uh, fill in that content for that tab. So HTML, and we're going to call this app employee mgmt.htm. And let's copy that line, and we'll make that one for each of the tabs. So let's go ahead and put in by period. We'll add in dashboard. And then finally reporting. So this now creates up the content for the tab strip and now we need to actually instantiate that tab strip. So we do that inside of that initialize module which we executed when the module itself is uh, created. So to start up the ES tab strip we need to run a function called ES create and ES create is a function which takes several parameters, the first one being the widget that you want to actually create. So in this case it's a tab strip followed by the HTML element that you're going to bind that object to. So in this case it's going to be uh, main tab strip. So let's do main tab strip and then you can specify any options that you need for creating that tab strip. And at this point in time we have none so we're just going to use uh, ES create here. Okay, so we save that and now we need to build in the content that's going to go for each one of these tabs so that when we click on it we will see um, some simple content and we'll just use the same kind of hello world application. So let's just go ahead and create a new file and this will be called app 
employee MGMT HTM and we're going to do an HTML HTML with some simple content again it's just going to be the header and we'll do uh, employee management okay so very simple there we'll save that and we'll save it as also the second one which will be uh, app employee by period we'll change the title to by period save that do the same thing for the dashboard and we'll make that in my dashboard and then finally one for the reporting and change the title okay so we've built the module which is going to control the tab strip and then just some simple content for each one of those let's go ahead and see what our application now looks like if we bring that back up again and let's go back to our app we now have the four tabs that we created and if I click on each one of them it will bring in the widget for each one of them there are a few nuances that are probably worth mentioning when we created this module we used an ID tag of module and then we used an ID tag of main tab strip for the actual tab strip itself when we reference them within the module itself we use the main tab strip and reference it as a standard jQuery element what ES framework does for you is it will automatically uniquify if you will the ID tags of every module and all the HTML that's within it so that you do not have to worry about collisions of names as the modules themselves are created so when we create the content for employee management or employee by period we could use the same ID tags and reference them the same way in the code and we will not have to worry about those names having conflicts within the same HTML document the other thing that we have done to this application in the completed version is that we have provided the ability for a URL to deal with the back and the forward tabs now if you notice in this one we didn't have that capability so let's go ahead and add that in and we'll do that through a few option changes on our tab strip now when you create a tab strip there is a parameter that you can give it called context name context name sets up this widget to be used in a more global fashion whether that's within the module itself or even outside of it and routing which is what allows us to allow the user to use the back and the forward button will use this context name to build out the URL so we're going to give this tab strip a context name of main tab and then we're going to enable the routing capability of ES framework this is all that needs to be done to turn on routing for your application in a standard HTML JavaScript style application there would be a, a significant amount of coding required to make this happen so now let's go back to our application and we're going to refresh this and you'll notice that the URL will expand with the name of the context name we gave the tab strip and then additional parameters which show which tab it's to be placed on when the user goes into that so if you'll notice that it says main tab equals zero now main tab is one and so forth and as the user hits the back button they can go through the tabs. Let me skip one here, two, three, then one, and then or the zero, then two. And if I go back, you'll see it's skipping in the normal way that we expect it to. So by simply adding a few configuration parameters, we can 
enable routing uh, in our application. This concludes part two of the Enterprise Services Framework tutorial.